Welcome to the Real Estate Show on KMED. January the 9th is our day today. Glad you've joined us. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys, with you. We're both real estate brokers with John L. Scott in Southern Oregon, and we get together with you once a week here on KMED. We talk about all sorts of real estate-related topics, and so far we've never run out of things to talk about, and I don't think we'll do it today either because we've got a terrific show lined up for you. Remember, you can watch all of our shows at realestateshoworegon.com or on youtube.com slash realestateshoworegon, and we thank you for doing that in advance. Well, Joe, you know, 2015 was a, was an amazing year. I think there's no question about that. The we, we surpassed all those indicators, you know, that took place from 2005. Remember, that was the height of that market around here. And it seems like everything we've done is above that now. So uh, anyway, well, I can't think of anybody better to talk with than Jim Ramley, who's the managing principal broker at John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon, the Medford and Ashland offices. And well, Happy New Year to you, first of all. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here. It's always fun to be with you guys. Well, we, we enjoy getting together with you because it's fun to pick your brain about things. And uh, <laughs> gosh, so, so, so tell us from your perspective, I mean, 2015 was a was a, you know was an amazing year, and I think it's all the pessimism year. that I had about it, you know, I've dissipated now. I mean, I <laughs> now that it's have. over, <laughs> so I, yeah, I was, I very it. prophetic, very yeah. yeah. prophetic. Yeah. Yes. So it's, tell us what your perception of 2015 was. It was a great year. You know, we're still in the midst of uh, of our great recovery in real estate. Uh, we're about five years in now since uh, the the depths of the Great Depression. Um, great recession. Mm -hmm. um, and the market here in Jackson County is just uh, is very, very strong. We have um, very low supply, high demand uh, that we don't have to, we don't seem to have any end to the buyers. And in all, sight. Year, all year long, it was like that, wasn't it? Yeah, all year long. We're actually at record breaking uh, lows for inventory. We often measure inventory by months of supply. And so the, the latest stat that we had um, showed us at a 2.9 months of supply. And what that means really is that if you stop taking listings today, how long would it take you to exhaust your current inventory? Mm -hmm. And that's 2.9 months. It sounds like a lot, but actually, uh, historically, um, a six-month um, threshold is a balanced market, balanced between buyers and sellers. So we're well below that, less than half. And is that what's created the, the seller's market that we're into right now? Is yep. just, just the supply and demand? Supply issue. and demand. And that's really what's driving prices um, in our market. Our, our market was up about 10% last year on median pricing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's creating a, you know, price gains, which is great for sellers that have been underwater for years and are now back to basically 2006 price levels. Mm -hmm. Um, so buyers are still getting a bargain. I mean, they're buying homes for exactly, you know, what they would have paid for 10 years ago. Um, and so it's still a great market for buyers. It's a great market for sellers that the toughest thing for a buyer today is just finding that right home. It's, it's finding, finding the finding property. The you know? Yeah. Challenging. Well, what's anything surprised you during the year? I mean, there were, I mean, we've, in our shows, you know, I mean, people would come through, hear stories of, you know, 10, 12 offers on properties. I mean, what what surprised you the most about the year that uh, maybe you didn't expect or surprises? I think the a couple of the biggest surprises that we've had is, you know, we've had talk for a long, long time about inter interest rates rising. And we expected an interest rate rise mm -hmm. early in 2015. And right. it, it didn't come. It didn't come. And then it didn't come in the summer. And it, finally, we just recently in the last quarter had a small interest rate rise, but it was pretty much already priced in the market. I mean, if you see prices, interest rates uh, at banks today, they're basically what they were the same thing last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, buyers are still benefiting from 40-year lows in, in interest rates. That's a big surprise, I think, for everybody in the real estate industry. We expected interest rates to go higher. Um, the other big surprise is that um, we didn't have any kind of demand fall off. Uh, you would expect demand, that, demand fall off. Yeah, okay. we, we expected maybe that the demand mm -hmm. would, would shrink back a little bit over the, over time because we had a fantastic 2014 as well. Yeah. Uh, but and if anything, it's accelerating. We're seeing more and more buyers come to the market, and that's um, – directly coming from, you know, job creation, job growth, and the ability of sellers that are, are selling homes in other parts of the country and then moving here. We were just mm -hmm. ranked um, the number one number. destination yeah. uh, in the state, uh, in, the, in, in, the country. in the country for people want to move to Oregon because uh, of the high quality of life here. I, w I, wonder what it, I wonder what's drawing them. It's not jobs in our area. No. I mean, it really isn't. I mean, there's uh, some, but not a lot. Uh, You've got to come with your profession and your money in hand, really. Yeah. Still to Southern Oregon, I think, as far as opportunity 
Willamette Valley is where most of that probably mm-hmm. lays for, for younger people that, well, are, that are on the move. Our John L. Scott brokers who've been on our show say that they're, they're coming from California in big numbers and retiring here. Mm-hmm. We're seeing that. You see that as well. Uh, you do that all, all, every day, don't you? Yeah, the mix is about a 60-40. 60% of our buyer pool is from out of state. 40% is local. Uh, it's pretty his- historically that's the norm, and that's what we're finding. And mm-hmm. so we'll, uh, in the downturn, we had a challenge because people couldn't sell their homes where they were coming from, so they couldn't move. But now that uh, they can sell from California and other parts of the world, they're, they're all coming here, and this mm-hmm. is their number one spot they want to come to. Mm-hmm. What happens if this demand continues? They continue to choose Oregon. Mm-hmm. Our inventory gets tighter because we know that we've been through a housing shortage because of the lack of new construction during that downturn mm-hmm. that we're not anywhere near to catching up with and, and what the demand is for. So it could even shrink the inventory even tighter. It, it could. Uh, my hope right now is that we have, we've had a lot of sellers um, on the fence. In other words, uh, when you look at the statistics from the National Association of Realtors, the mm-hmm. average seller will hold their home about two to six years and then move on to their next home. They'll, two cy- to six. Okay. they'll cycle into mm-hmm. their next house. Think about yourself. That's probably relatively accurate. Um, but today, when you when you look at the sellers, the homeowners across the country, the average homeowners held their home about ten years, and mm-hmm. so there's a huge pent up seller mm-hmm. uh, demand to sell, but they haven't been able to, and just tell now because prices right. are now allowing them to sell, get out, and move up. Is that the reason? So, you, is that the reason you're saying absolutely. the inventories are so low? Is yeah, that absolutely? I think okay. sellers have been holding back uh, inventory for a long time. I, my prediction, if I'm if I'm kind of soothsaying a little bit here, is that in 2016, we're going to start to see more of a release of inventory in our local market. Okay. I think buyers are going to start to have more choices and more to choose from. I mean, we definitely have a challenge. I mean, uh, no doubt, uh, as Joe said, that we need builders building more inventory. Yeah. No question. We, and we're every day talking to builders, build more inventory. But I think we'll also see traditional sellers coming to market. Yeah. And it's the type of inventory that is being, that is being built that is also – you know, they, we found out, Jim, that there's nobody really in charge of, of housing around here. I mean, each city does their own thing. And, you know, well, what's the mix? I mean, if you, you, you got to build affordable places, and that's what seems to lack. You know, I mean, look at the rental market I just saw with the that. inventories the way it is. I mean, so in the housing market, is it the same way in those affordable, affordable areas? Yeah, I just saw a study done by the National Home Builders Association that showed that in the beginning of the recovery, home builders were almost completely focused on building for the niche of a retiree who was building kind of a very custom home, Mm -hmm. more of a higher end home, because Mm -hmm. they wanted to build for these people because they know they had money and they would be able to buy the home at the end. Today, that market is not as big as builders need it to be. So they're starting to move down into more traditional markets, which Mm -hmm. would be an affordable, you know, 1500 square foot, you know, 250 to $300,000 home. That's what we need. We Mm -hmm. need a lot more of that inventory. Um, to supply the demand. Yeah. Well, it's in, in, until that happens. So it's not by, because I, I would think that, gee, maybe we've sold so many homes in 2014, 2015, that there's the inv- there's not enough inventory because of that. But it's not necessarily, you think it's pent up. It's pent up sellers. Being ready to come out. Mm-hmm. And, and we'll see. Well, we'll see, because it's pretty low right now, especially in those low inventory rates that uh, that 150 to 250,000. Uh, Range you now, there's a 1.1 month supply of inventory. Right. Yes. The, below that, it's you know 1.8 month supply. So those are the those are the areas that are really selling. The other ones have a little higher, obviously higher higher weights. To your point as to who you know keeps an eye on housing, there was a brief discussion at the end of the Medford City Council noon meeting this week about inclusionary zoning. And Oregon is one of two states in the United States that does not have uh, the ability for inclusionary zoning, which which you can kind of dictate uh, affordable housing within these developments. And, and as you grant mm-hmm. the opportunity to build a bigger subdivision, there, there's also a component that can bring um, uh, affordable housing into the mix as well. So there's a delegation, I think, that's coming to Medford to meet with the council. I, I don't, not sure who they represent, but that's in the works. And Medford's going to take a look at that and see if the council wants to get behind that, mm-hmm. perhaps. Well, I hope they do. I mean, uh, someone's got to, like, lead the way here. Because we're, we're so low on, on rental properties. Mm-hmm. Well, Shannon Putris, who was a John L. Scott agent, was with us a few weeks ago. And I, we asked her, we got into this discussion about if you were investing if you were investing in real estate today, what would you invest in? Mm-hmm. And remember her, her response was she, she'd build duplexes and, and fourplexes yep. Yep. because there, there aren't any. 
Right. And there's such a demand yeah. for that type of housing. And funny. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. The funny thing is, I just talked to her this morning. She just sold a duplex. So <laughs> she, she's living the dream right there. Well, yes. That's really good. <laughs> well, it's true. And when you say of, of what she said, I think it's, it's very true. It, and one, one thing, uh, Pete, uh, you, you were mentioning about prices and price bands. We study that in, the, in John L. Scott. And we yeah. look at uh, price categories. And what's interesting is, uh, as you mentioned, the lower the price, the higher the demand. Right. And so we consider if you have less than a 30-day supply of, uh, of inventory, you're, you're basically sold out. Mm-hmm. And in, in our lowest price bands, the 0 to 150 range, you mentioned a 1.2 months of supply, which is totally accurate. 150 to $250,000, we're at 1.15 months supply. Yeah. 250 to 350, 1.44 months. And then it starts to creep up to more like three months, three and a half months right. above those bands. But below 250. We're pretty much sold out. Right. So if you have a property that's going to be in that sell in that category, Mm -hmm. we've been telling people now's the time to put it on because the inventory is so low. Yeah. And it's a contrarian kind of position because you normally people say, well, I'm going to wait till spring to put my house in the market. No, right now is one of the best times in the last five years to have your house in the market today, you know, in January. Yeah, mm. people don't believe that, but it's true. I mean, they're still selling every day. That's the scoop right there. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. And the thing is, the sales mm-hmm. are continuing. There's more sales occurring than there are inventory being replacing them, correct? Absolutely. We had a 53%, uh, I believe, uh, increase in pending sales uh, the last month that we had that report come out. Mm-hmm. And we only had about a 35% increase in the number mm-hmm. of new listings. Yeah. So we still have this gap where we still don't have enough inventory to sell. Yeah. So, well, see, that's that's the story of our market, and like we always talk about, I've never been in a in a in a business, I guess, that is so supply and demand oriented as real estate is all across the board. Mm-hmm. New yes. new homes, I mean, whatever, it's it's a it's a supply and demand and issue. The, the dynamics are driven and and take some pretty interesting twists and turns. Look at the ten years that Absolutely. we look back on now, and yeah. my goodness, we've been through it all pretty much. And yeah. and you come out on the other end of it if you didn't go through a lot of pain and suffering through those. Tough years. We're right about on track where where the market should have been, and I think that's going to restore a lot of confidence for folks. Well, I I didn't realize the sixty forty split again. Tell that to our listeners again, uh, because that's an interesting part. Yeah, about sixty percent of our buyer base is coming from out of the area. Forty percent are local buyers that are either first time home buyers, uh, new families forming, or they're selling a a home they have locally and and rebuying. And and people are moving up as as we're seeing, so we're seeing a lot of that. So sixty forty. I think of the. Cash buyers that are out there, do you still see that? A lot of cash buyers still, huh? Yeah, in our in Oregon, uh, we measure this, and in Oregon, it's about twenty eight percent of the buyers are cash buyers, so about one in four, one roughly, in four, yeah, yeah. is a cash buyer. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Well, just to show you how twenty fifteen was in real estate in Jackson County, I mean, the, the SOMLS stat shows that the total sales, I mean, it's the total everything, right? Total yep. sales in Jackson County in twenty fifteen were three billion thirty seven million. Five hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars. That is big number. Astound, astonishing. <laughs> I mean, that's a, it's a lot. That's a lot for a, a county lot. of less than three hundred thousand people. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, uh, yeah. I don't know what Josephine County is, but that's what Jackson County My in goodness. 2015 was. And Joe, of that, I mean, j- just to uh, just to show you how, how how these how busy it was. John L. Scott, the two offices combined did six. Was it six hundred and fifty-two million dollars? <laughs> In sales. And our good friend Bob Gervais, by the way, I, I went to Bob's uh, service. It was really very nice. And we, we got to say, send a, a good you know, off for Bob when he died recently. But, of course, in 2005, remember, REMAX Ideal was the, was the number one office here at the town. And they did $555 right. million, he right. told us, that year. That wow. was the biggest year they'd ever, ever done. Huge year. And so look at how much we are uh, as we're coming down here in 20, 2015 that that much more is still is being that. sold. So yeah. We've sold that. We've just crushed that. Yeah, we? yeah, it's yeah. amazing. And what about investing in real estate? Now, th- th- this is my favorite one, Jim, that, that you show. Because we always tell people, what are you going to invest your money in? You know, when you're in a good market like we are, you know, people want to invest in. You're going to put it in the stock market. You're going to go put it in a CD. I've heard all these horror stories. I tell people I put it in real estate. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's true, isn't it? No, no question. I mean, if you're watching the stock market today, oh. uh, you know, it's getting yeah. destroyed. Uh, but if you look at just all of 2015, you don't look, you know, you never measure markets by one day, but you look about all of 2015, um, measuring real estate against other asset classes. We just got this report in uh, from CNBC and, and silver down 11.5%, gold down 10.4%. The Dow Jones itself was down 2.2%. Yeah. S&P was down about 1%. NASDAQ was up a little bit, uh, 5.7%, but real estate was the number one asset class, up 6.8% across the board. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you're looking for a safe, stable, secure investment, I believe real estate's your best bet. And there's a difference between real estate and other asset classes in that not only is it a great Investment, you can live in it. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's, you can't live in gold, right? right? Yeah. It's something tangible. It's something tangible. It's something tangible. That's right. And, and it certainly thinks that the, that the demand for housing, and this is uh-huh. again what we learn in our shows, and our listeners have heard us, the demand in our county, because we had five years of nothing, that the demand is is, is still great there, and uh, it's going to continue. I don't think but, there's any question, right? Where, where did you get all these good numbers and these great notes? You really came prepared for this. <laughs> Show today. Did you go to Jim's Tuesday class? You know, I generally go to those things. I, I learn more. I learn lots of different things. I, I say that only to point out what great information that yeah. our folks bring us each week to keep our agents on, on the Thank front, you. Yeah. Thank the front you. edge of the market. Well, that was 2015. It's history, boys yeah, and girls, gone. isn't it? It's yeah. not even there. We got a break coming up here. When we come back, we're, we're going to get Jim's comment. What about what, what's going to happen this year? Interest rates are going to go? What's, I, I mean, I, I have no idea. It's going to be a hit and miss year. I don't know. We're going to get Jim's comment from that coming back here on The Real Estate Show. Don't forget, you can listen to any of our shows at realestateshoworegon.com or at YouTube slash realestateshoworegon. Don't you dare go away. We're coming right back here on KMED AM and FM right after this. The Real Estate Show continues here on KMED this weekend. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, The Real Estate Guys, with you. And as usual, thanks for joining us here on KMED every weekend here talking about real estate and its uh, related related topics and issues. And we just never seem to run out. Next week, we'll tell you about title. You know, you you got it. when you go to get a real estate, you know, we've learned one thing, certainly, that you got to have a team to this to work. It's just not the broker or the lender. You got to have everybody working to make a make a close, right? You just said you closed. You just closed a place. Your own, huh? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Was it it painless? Was it was it was it good? uh, Well, it was a few bumps, but you know that's what we expect (laughs) in the real estate business. We got it done. We got it closed. Good, good for you. That's always good to hear. We're with Jim Ramley. He's a managing principal broker at John L. Scott Real Estate in uh, Medford and Ashland, and our uh, well, he's he's the guy who Joe and I. uh, uh, look up to as he leads our our way in our offices and uh, had a pretty good year in 2015 to John L. Scott. Okay, 2016, Jim. Yes. All right. All right. It, <laughs> I, okay. January 1st, you know, brings out the deal of the new real market values that are being calculated as we speak. Last year overall was 7%. Uh, is it going to go up or down uh, in 20 uh, now from, from 2016? I don't know. I think it's going to go up again. And how fast is it going to go up? These are the things that, that concern me. So tell us what you think about what what, what are the what are the obstacles or that may, we may face. Well, our biggest obstacle, as we've already talked about, is is supply. But I I truly believe supply is going to start to come back to the market. Okay. I think as we enter spring, I think more people are going to release their house and uh, want to move up, move down, move across town, mm-hmm. you know, uh, move into another area. So I think we're going to see more listings hit the hit the street, and that's going to give buyers more choices. Um, I still think we're going to have prices rising in 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, do we are we going to see another 10% double digit rise in prices? I don't think we will. I think I think prices will moderate as supply becomes online, oh, and that'll okay. be a good thing. We don't want to continue to have double digit price increases. And no, that's not, that's no, not that's not healthy for the market. But I will tell you that you know there's some people that have uh, you know whispered bubble and you know those kind of things. We're not in any kind of similar situation as to 2005 and six. Mm-hmm. The difference no. being that it's extremely, um, you know, stringent standards to get a loan today. Absolutely, There's no subprime loans in the market. It is uh, a qualification process, uh, a very, very um, diligent appraisals being done, uh, home inspections are being done. So when people buy homes, there are people that are qualified to buy the house. Mm-hmm. So a uh, totally different market. What's It's a truly supply-demand issue. I think supply is going to come online and moderate the pace of the market. I still think, actually, the but the volume of sales will increase. I think um, mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if, if the country did 6 million sales this year, um, you know, five and a half easily. Mm-hmm. In, in, new, in, in just uh, in, home in, sales? In home sales, mm-hmm. five and a no. half million. Yeah. No. <laughs> Our office last year closed 2,300 um, transactions. Wow. Um, as you mentioned, 652 million. To compare mm-hmm. that back to 2014, we closed 492 million. So we had a $150 million increase oh, in wow. sales. So do we expect another $150 million increase? Yes, we do, because the volume of transactions, the number of transactions, will be increased. It's not going to come from price increases. It'll come from just the number of transactions. The number occurring. of transactions. So you think, I see, this is what Jim is so optimistic about on some of this stuff. You know, yeah. 
you think I mean it's going to increase above what you just did. I, that's that's I, amazing. I would be shocked if we didn't. Okay. I, I think you know I don't think we're going to quite make a billion dollars in sales next year. Our uh -huh. company, but. You know, two to three years from now, we're, we're shooting for a billion dollars. Because there's just more inventory coming up, more transactions taking place, and, and not necessarily as the price increases, what you're saying. That's 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 interesting to yeah hear that. Right? Yeah, I, I think yeah. I, I absolutely do. We have a, a, a big buyer pool that's on the sidelines that just can't buy right now. I, I'll give you a quick example of that, just really, really quick. The house that I just closed on. Okay. Um, wrote the offer. The sellers were nervous that they couldn't find a replacement house. So I had to negotiate into the sale to give them up to six months to find a replacement house. Wow, wow. six so, months. So they did find mm -hmm. a replacement house. The deal fell apart. They just now, two months later now, uh, have found a replacement house. So it took them that long after closing. We closed on the December 15th. Now they're about a month, a month and a so half. So you're still not in it. I'm, I'm, you, I can wait six months. <laughs> I might be six months out. I don't know. Well, that, but I had to make that deal so uh -huh. they would have to find replacement housing. How well, do you schedule your housewarming party? Yeah. It's a tough I'm, one. I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting. Well, I, we, had that same, we had that same thing outside of Grants Pass. You know, the people who were selling they didn't have a replacement place to go to. And so they were worried too. So we, had, it wasn't six months, but yeah. uh, uh, had a number of weeks. So if you think, that, if, so, you yeah. think, if you think about that in terms of the overall volume of the market, in a traditional market, those people would have found a house and closed on it already. And gone, yeah. And gone. And, you know, that would have just created more volume to the yeah. market. Yeah. That's So it's restraining the market. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly That's is. A good example, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what happens next with that. Now, one of the things in 2016 that has happened, or 2015 that happened, and I'm curious is what may happen here is regarding loans and like FHA. Remember FHA, when we started our show, Jim, it was like 97% of all loans in this country were like FHA loans, you know, mm -hmm. back loans. And now it's like dropped to zip almost. Uh, that that program seems to have just fallen out because of the fees and the kinds of things that they've done into that. They're actually lowering the fees again. During the downturn, uh, they did increase their fee structure quite a bit. And I think there was a big fear uh, about solvency and, you know, making sure that they were going to be solvent and all these things. I think that has dissipated as the market's recovered. They've now lowered fees again. It's much more competitive to get an FHA loan. I think today FHA loans account for about 60% of the market. So <clears throat> it's not the whole market. It's definitely down from the downturn of the market when mm -hmm. almost everybody was getting an FHA loan. Yeah. Um, it, but what we are starting to see come back to the market is uh, jumbo loans. Those are loans over okay. $625,000. Um, our in-house lender, iMortgage, um, now has rates that are down as low as 35 to 4% on jumbo mortgages. On jumbo mm -hmm. mortgages. An amazing rate, yeah. even lower than yeah. conventional yeah. in some cases. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. So well, those, those are coming back. Yeah. Well, inventory's around. Inventory's low. You say it's going to come back here in the spring. So we'll, we'll keep certainly certainly watch that. And uh, I wonder if certain, area, you know, certain areas of the county are better than others, you know, in certain in prices and in, in, in yeah, well, because I had a, like a loss of value in my house in Ashland, which was, you know, 7%. I went down, things like that. So it's it's not even across the county and all that we talk about here. There's different areas that are sure. some, some, some higher, some not. Definitely yeah. localized. You know, you know, all real, real estate like politics is local. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, it's, it's hyper localized and that one neighborhood can appreciate faster than a neighborhood that's, you know, two miles away. Mm -hmm. So it's again, it's about uh, it could be as simple as school districts. It can be new construction that's happening in the market. It could be, um, you know, new rentals being placed in that in that area as opposed to another area not having those things. So lots of variables. I will say that uh, when you interview buyers and ask them why do they buy the home they're in, the number one reason isn't the home itself, which is interesting. It's always the neighborhood. Neighborhood, the neighborhood. trumps the home itself. They'll buy a bad house in a great neighborhood, uh, but they mm -hmm. won't do the reverse. Right. They won't buy a great house in a bad neighborhood. In a bad neighborhood. Yeah. That's true, and we see those reflected. We, we see those types of things reflected as well. What else in 2016? What else do you think is going to happen? That uh, in the market in 2016, I, I, uh, you know, every economist out there will tell you interest rates will rise. So that's okay. another reason. I wonder how I, much. We, we don't uh, know. Who knows? Yeah, I know. But they failed I, last year. They did fail last year. But I will say that if you assume they're going to rise at all, then I would suggest to buyers that you know lock in the low interest rate. Just to make just as an insurance policy. Remember, you're going to live with this interest rate for 30 years, probably, mm -hmm. you know, at least 10. And so why not lock in that low, low interest rate? Mm -hmm. And that'll make a big difference mm -hmm. in your bottom line and your monthly payment over the course of time. The other thing I would say is, you know, the things that are impacting in the industry here, we're still seeing, as we talked about before the show, the green rush, you know, medical marijuana is definitely having an impact mm -hmm. on rural property. Uh, the great debate about, you know, the morality of that. But I can tell you just from a, 
the street level selling real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of buyers coming to the table and coming out of the woodwork that are buying up rural property with that mm -hmm. intent, whether they can actually do it based on zoning and, right. and whether they can get mm -hmm. the water to do what they want to do, uh, you know, because that requires commercial well from, you know, the state. That's another question. But I can tell you the demand is there. I think that 2016 is going to be a critical okay. year in rural in rural properties because of what exactly what you're saying we've been seeing and hearing this. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's big. It's a big deal. And, yeah. you know, we're one of the states that's leading the, the way in the country. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of states are following Oregon. Um, another big, big uh, factor in our local market, which can't be really understated, is the impact of uh, rents and the affordability of yeah. rents. Mm -hmm. So in our market, uh, we measure this as an office. We have an in-house property manager, but uh, we're also plugged into the, the greater rental uh, picture. And there's about 4,500 rentals in this market. And there's about a less than a 2% vacancy factor. Mm -hmm. Healthy market, about 5%. That's going to mm -hmm. impact it, home it's sales. Just, it's just like residential sales, isn't Absolutely. it? They're both, they, they, it's amazing how they follow each other, the, the, the vacancy rates and the, and the availability of properties. Well, it really said, is. Said demand for rental properties, and there will be going forward. Yeah. And those renters will be buyers. Yep. They're going to be buyers. Absolutely. Hey, the Real Estate Show, one more segment to go with Jim Ramley, the managing principal broker at John L. Scott. Pete and Joe, the real estate guys, we're coming right back here on KMED AM and FM right after this. The real estate show rolls on here on KMED. It was uh, Saturday afternoon for morning for you here. <laughs> Pete Belcaster and Joe Breath, the real estate guys with you. Don't forget, you can check any of our shows out at realestateshoworegon.com. Or you can also watch any of our shows at youtube.com slash realestateshoworegon. We'd love to hear from you as well. So you can also contact Joe or I via email at Pete or Joe at realestateshoworegon.com. Next week here on the show, the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. We'll talk about issues obtaining title on property. And the home builders will be here two weeks from today. Of course, they're getting ready for their big show, the Home Builder Show, February 19th, 20th, and 21st out at the Expo Park. And you can go to hbajc.com. To get a booth because they're they're they're, they're almost you know, they're almost out. I actually tasked Brad the other day. They're going pretty fast. Uh, and with the market the way it is, I, I could see how that goes hand in hand with a great home yeah. show that they'll put yeah. together for us. And all, all those experts and all the new technology that is coming well, to the home building industry is on display all I in one place. I still think one of the. By the way, we're with Jim Ramley, the pr managing principal broker at John L. Scott Real Estate today here on the show. I was surprised when the home builders did their home tour. You know, Jim, back yeah. in October, mm -hmm. they had thousands of people. Shocked them. I think they were anticipating hundreds. Like 12, <laughs> you know, the twelve thousand people going uh, through those. The, right. So the demand. I mean, the interest. I looked at it as. What interest there is in housing in yeah, our community? Lot, yeah, I mean, people were talking about it. Everybody was yeah. Talking, yeah everybody, mm -hmm. Look, look at these places. Yeah, I was all the way out in Eagle Point for open house out there to hold one open and had a pretty steady stream come through all the way out there. So, wow! Yeah. Wow! It, it, what a, what a, what an event! Anyway, that's uh, from our good friends at the Home Builders. Well, here at the end of uh, 2016, there's lots of things going on. Jim, uh, you talk about generational issues regarding housing. I'm always curious about that, and people who are my age in the in my 60s. My view of housing is different than somebody in their 20s and 30s. And, and each each of these groups is a, I mean, it's, it's different. It is different. They're, they're, yeah, and they're looking different. for different things absolutely. and everything, aren't they? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Interesting, uh, you know, we're looking at that being another trend. You're talking about trends in 2016, yeah. a generational shuffle, we call it. Millennials, um, younger people, 25 to 35 in age, um, they made up about 2 million of our 5 million sales nationwide. So about a third of the sales wow. last year was to millennials. To millennials. Yeah, so um, okay. my son's 19 is not quite to that mark, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, five, six years, he's going to be a home buyer probably. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the new kind of emerging uh, market for first-time home buyers. These are kids that have just gotten out of college. They're getting their first jobs. They're getting married. They're starting up families. They're buying their first homes. Mm -hmm. And then with the, uh, the, the other generations, Generation X and your senior generations, um, we're looking at a lot of those as being people that are going through a financial recovery. They might have gone underwater with their home value, maybe bought in 2006, 2005. Mm -hmm. We call those a boomerang buyer set. Um, a boomerang buyer meaning if they went through a short sale or distress sale, it's probably taken them four or five years to recover their credit to the point where they can buy again. But they want to buy. They were homeowners. Those are the kind of people that hate renting, yep. mm -hmm. uh, and they want to own their home. And they now can in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whoa. Again, it goes back to demand. You just mm -hmm. can't. Interesting with the millennials, those are sharp kids, and sharp. they're getting some pretty good coaching because this is the time if you're young to get into the housing game and get that with the interest rates low and the 
before the prices go any further. So they make it some really strong moves to set themselves up for their life that way. It's been a, it's been a sell. I mean, we when we watch the uh, home ownership rate in the country, and it's plummeted over the last uh, five years. <laughs> we went from having about sixty nine percent of our population uh, owning a home all the way down below sixty. It was at a fifty Ooh, year wow. low. Uh, and so that was a direct result of these kids probably watching their parents go through pain and suffering of home ownership, going underwater, maybe losing their home. But when you interview them and you talk to them, and the, uh, the National Association of Realtors does this, they find that e- despite the fact that they watch their parents go through that, they want to be a homeowner. They still recognize the value of home ownership, but they're being smarter. And Joe's exactly right. They're mm-hmm. being way smarter about it. Uh, and these kids, when they come into our offices, they are savvy. Oh, they yeah. they have I, every technology I, wired. They're looking yep. at uh, the realtor dot com. They're looking yep. at Zillow. They're they're looking at the trend lines. Yep. They're they're plugged in. I I agree with you. In fact, it's that's really true. They they are very prepared. And and but but that's what you want buyers to be. I mean, part of our show is we want we want you to be good real estate consumers and and study your on your own because you, there's a lot of it. Well, there's so much information it's changed, out there. changed our role I mean, as that's brokers the thing. You know, in a big way in the yeah. last five, 10 years. So much information. What other trends do you think might uh, uh, come up uh, in, in 2016? I think the, the one of the bigger trends, too, that we've seen emerging really for the last four or five years is the way people consume real estate information. Mm-hmm. And so traditionally, um, you know, people had to come to real estate office to get information. We know that's been changing for years. But the biggest transformation we've seen recently is uh, the transition to mobile technology and access to real estate information on a mobile device. So Mm -hmm. one of the questions that we train our agents to ask in their initial interview with a buyer is what kind of mobile device do you use? And Mm -hmm. they'll say, you know, we use an iPhone, we use an Android, we use an iPad. Um, And now we'll say, well, great, you can download our branded mobile app, Mm -hmm. and then you can look at homes. We have a GPS-enabled app, Mm -hmm. and so they can, as they're driving around, they can pull up to a house, literally push one button on our app, and it will tell them everything they want to know about our listing and any other listing Mm -hmm. in the market. Could be a call with bankers, I mean, uh, Remax, anybody's. Uh, and that power of having that information is a transformational point mm-hmm. for the way that we sell real estate. Instead yeah. of showing buyers 30, 40, 50 homes like we might have in the past, yeah. they'll drive around, show themselves homes. Mm-hmm. They'll narrow it down to four or five. They'll hit a button on their their app that says, we like this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the background, our John L. Scott agents will know, oh, that my client likes this one. And then they'll call them and say, hey, I see you found one today. You want to go out and take a look at the inside? It's exactly true. It's uh, exactly yeah. what's happening with that. And, and the, the the technology is there. It's instantaneous. It is. And I, I'm different. amazed how many times I'm out in, in the field and I use that John L. Scott, my John L. Scott app. I truly do. It's, uh, it's, it's helpful. very so handy. Just, just as you're looking and you find a neighborhood that they're hot on, you can just pull up everything that's around you just for a little drive by and. Uh, acclimate them to some more opportunities and options that are out there. So it's yeah. really helpful that well. One thing that's interesting about that is, uh, uh, you know, one you got to look at the value point of having a realtor involved in the transaction. And you're right. There's a ton of information that buyers have access to. And, the, and the, the value point that we still offer, in my opinion, is that we help people understand all the information. Yeah. So yeah. We, we act more as consultants than salespeople. Mm-hmm. And I think that is our, our biggest um, advantage when people are hiring us and working with us. One thing, for instance, when we're working with a buyer, we can use something in the, that the buyers don't have access to or sellers, which is a, a system we call NARRPR, mm-hmm. which is a National Association of Realtors Realtor, Realty Property Resource website and app. And that will give us deep, deep information on any home. It's pulling from 14, 15 different websites and databases. And for instance, I can, if you we pulled up outside of Pete's house, mm-hmm. for instance, I could say, what did Pete pay for his house? Mm-hmm. I could tell my buyers. I could tell them when the last time um, he refinanced it and mm-hmm. what the loan amount he got on the yeah, house, yeah, yeah. Uh, what Good the stuff. assessed value is, mm-hmm. everything you wanted to know about wow. that house and more yeah. on my mobile device with my buyer in yeah. the house. And our, and our job as brokers is to is to give uh, the buyers all the information that, that you can on the property so Absolutely. they can make the best decision that they can. And that works, doesn't it? I it mean, does. that, that, that truly works. Well, we've heard that from the John L. Scott agents who've been on our shows. You know, I mean, we all talk the same line, you know, about how to give good customer service, how to close a deal. You got to close it when you got them there. And that's how it works. 
Jim okay. Ramway, thank you for Great being here this week. Thank you. you can come back Thanks, anytime, you know that, and, and be with Never. us here in the real estate <laughs> show. That'll, that'll do it for this day here on January the 9th. For Pete and Joe, don't forget to check out our website, realestateshoworegon.com. In the meantime, have a great week, everybody, and God bless. We'll see you next Saturday right here on KMED. You've been listening to The Real Estate Show on KMED AM and FM Radio, presented by John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon, along with All Cities Property Management, the Home Builders Association of Jackson County, Ditech Mortgage, the Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, and the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. For guest information or to watch a past show, visit us on online at realestateshoworegon.com. Join us again next weekend for Southern Oregon's one and only real estate show on KMED.